The platform can be accessed by typing the URL into the browser, mel.cgiar.org. To log into the platform, insert your credentials and click Login. The user is now in the home page of the account and from here it's possible to access all of the sections available based on the user's role and position. It's possible to return to this page anytime by clicking the home button in the top bar. The profile summary is always visible in the middle of the home page and consists of the user's professional title, bio, profile photo and a link to the user's related institution. The management summary is always visible on the right side of the home page. This highlights the number of projects and activities or products the user is currently involved in. Click on My Account in the top right to open the profile page. It's recommended to enrich the profile as much as possible, for example by adding a photo and a bio, since this information will also be available through the knowledge sharing channels of Mel, along with the user's work. The account can be synced with ORC ID to automatically retrieve all academic information on the user, while saving the ORC ID to authorize all related publications. You can access the user guide at any moment by clicking the MEL icon in the far right of the navigation bar. This is also where you'll find the Frequently Asked Questions section. Let's move now to look at the planning module. In this section of the webinar, I will give a quick overview of the planning functions. The planning menu is organized in three sub-menus, CRP, Center and Projects. When the user selects one of these sub-menus, the platform will show a list of elements depending on the user's responsibilities. When the user clicks on CRP planning, they can see this dashboard. This user has responsibilities at different levels, flagship, cluster, activity product, and output. Let me stop for a second. Please note that you have a quick navigation tree on the left side of your screen. This allows you to navigate through the management levels. Click once on the folder icon to expand each level. Double click on each line to open the corresponding overview page. If the text of the element is in bold, it means that the user is responsible for the selected level and the double click will open a management page. Now we go back to the planning dashboard and we continue with the flagship management. Flagship is a management level that aggregates different clusters implemented by one or more institutions. After the click, the user can see in this table the flagship under their responsibility. The user may click on the action buttons to add and edit related data. Through the view button, the user can see the basic flagship information such as code, title and leader. This information can only be modified by the administrator. The information action opens a new window where the user can add additional data, such as total population, flagship description, opportunities and challenges, risks, assumptions, impact pathway description, an image with a visual presentation of the impact pathway, and business case. The related file link opens a page where informative files can be uploaded and links to useful websites and materials can be provided. The SRF mapping action allows the user to identify the Intermediate Development Outcomes IDOs, and sub-IDOs targeted by the flagship and define its contribution to the CGIAR strategy and results framework. To add a new IDO, select Add New, then select an IDO from the list. The new IDO will appear in the table. This will enable the user to select one or more related sub-IDOs. 
The indicators action allows the user to define specific criteria to evaluate the progress toward the achievement of the IDOs and sub-IDOs. To add a new indicator, select Add Indicator in the top left corner of the page, then provide the following data, name, unit, target, and explanation. When you have registered new indicators, you may specify baseline and target values by country and by year, and define reporting responsibilities. The overview action opens a page containing a summary of the information on the flagship, as well as information on related clusters, projects and indicators. This page is visible for all users, including those not registered in the platform. The See Clusters action allows the FP leader to see the list of clusters mapped under the flagship. The clusters are the level of management below the flagship. They aggregate different activity products and projects implemented by one or more institutions. The FP leader will access in view mode all the information related to clusters and may also see the activity product level by clicking on the see activity product button. In the present case, the user is at the same time flagship and cluster leader. We will now continue the presentation and see how to add or edit data at the cluster level. To edit the description and key information of a cluster, click on the button Edit. The user may edit all the fields with the exception of those shaded in grey. More detailed information, including geospatial data, may be added using the Information and Field Sites buttons. The Related File Link button has the same function described for the flagship level. The SRF mapping action allows a user to identify the intermediate development outcomes and sub-IDOs targeted by the cluster. In this case, the list of IDOs and sub-IDOs that can be selected is limited to the set of outcomes already defined at the flagship level. The outcomes action allows the user to identify the development outcomes, DOs, and research outcomes, ROs, that define the impact pathway at the cluster level. To add a new outcome, select Add New in the top left corner of the Outcomes section and then provide the following data. Outcome code, outcome statement, type, and related development outcomes or sub-IDOs. The Indicators action allows the user to both define new indicators and retrieve existing indicators previously defined at the flagship level. To retrieve existing indicators, select Retrieve from IDO slash sub-IDO, then select from the list one or more indicators that you want to use at the cluster level, and click on Add Indicators. To add a new indicator, select Add Other Outcome Indicators, and then provide the following data, name, unit, target, and explanation. When you have registered new indicators, you may also specify the baseline and the target values by country and by year, and define any reporting responsibilities. Now let's go back to the main cluster page. The Activity Product button allows the cluster leader to see the list of activities or products mapped under the cluster. The cluster leader will access in view mode all the information related to activities or products and may also see all the related details.
Now we will see the activity product level. Let's go back to the planning dashboard and click on the manage activity product button. The product page has two main sections. On the left side of the page, there are different tabs. The user can click on each of these tabs to access more detailed information. The related information will be presented on the right side of the page. In the first tab, the user can see and edit the key information of the activity product and may also add related file link. In the research team tab, the user is provided with an overview of the scientists involved in the activity product. The output section allows the user to define specific results, for example, tools or technologies mapped under the activity product. To add a new output, select add new and then provide a code, select an output leader, a co-leader and type the output name. Once the information is provided, click on save changes. The newly created output will then be available in the table. To edit an output, click on Edit. You may now modify the existing information and provide additional details. Here, you may characterize the output using the types defined in the CGIAR annual report. Depending on the selected indicator type, the button Edit AR appears in the Actions column and gives the possibility to provide a more detailed description. This strictly follows the CGIAR format. To add a new partner, click on the button and select Add New. Then provide the following data. Partner, point of contact, partnership level and partnership area. Data entry is assisted with controlled lists. After saving, the new partner will appear in the list. With the deliverable button, the user may register concrete steps that represent progress towards the delivery of the output. To add a new deliverable, select Add New in the top left corner of the page and then provide the title, short description, expected delivery date, leader, CRPs, countries and type. The type used here are in alignment with the ones used in CGSpace. The CRP collaboration action opens a window where the user may indicate if there are active collaborations with other CRPs for the delivery of the output. In the training workshop section, the user is provided with an overview of the capacity development activities. This section has been developed in collaboration with members of the CAPDEV community of practice and the CRP on forest, trees and agroforestry. To add a new CAPDEV activity, Choose among the presented types, individual trainings, internships, workshops, field visits, and add related data. The Outcomes section shows the Development Outcomes, DOs, and Research Outcomes, ROs, targeted by the activity or product. These outcomes are also visualized in the Impact Pathway. Through this visual tool, you may edit the linkages between outputs and outcomes and then modify the share of the budget that is contributing to the achievement of each of the outcomes. The Research Phase tab provides an overview of the research phases defined for the activity product in different years. The Budget tab opens a section with financial data. Budget is organized following OCS and CGIAR L series. This information can be automatically retrieved from OCS if the institution provides a related web service to MEL. In the planning module, the user may also register bilateral and Windows 3 projects and then map these projects under different CRPs and center structures. To see this part, we go back to the planning menu and click on projects to visualize the list of projects managed by the user. To edit a project, click on the edit button. In this section, the user can see the project information organized in different pages. One, general information, with key information that can be synchronized with OCS if a web service is enabled. 
Here, the user may map the project under one or more C CRPs and define the budget share. Two, objectives and targets. Three, location. Four, media, with image that will be presented in the project website and with a list of communication channels. Five, key documents. Six, centers strategic objectives. Here, the user may map the project under the corresponding center structure. In this case, the project is led by the International Potato Center, and the user may select one of the SIP strategic objectives. The last page allows the manager to add final notes. Once the information is provided, click on Save Project. To manage a project, go back to the project planning page and click on the Manage button. This page is very similar to the one we just saw for managing activity product. We will show you only two sections here that are slightly different from what we have already presented a few minutes ago. The donors report section provides the user with an overview of the reports planned and submitted to donors. The project manager, if the system is not synchronized with OCS, adds the expected donors report name and type specifying the related period for the document and the due date with additional remarks. Two months, one month and one week before the due date, the manager receives a reminder to upload the file. Once uploaded, a center workflow will start for clearing the report before sending to the donor. The roadmap section provides the user with a roadmap of the project listing all outputs and deliverables presented in a Gantt chart. Next, we'll look at how to use the Plan of Work and Budget menu. When a CRP or a centre completes its planning, each user can see a synthesis of the information registered. Move the cursor to the top bar and position it on POWBAR. This will open the related menu. Click on POWB. Type the year, select the centre or the CRP, and if you want, limit the search to one flagship or cluster. If you selected a CRP, you may also limit the search to one of the implementing centers. Then click on Get POWB. The platform will show a list of flagships. Click once on the bars to expand and see more information at the cluster level, at the product level, or with all the details on outputs and deliverables. The user can also export in Excel format the selected information. This was an overview of the planning module. Next, we'll learn how to use the platform for reporting.